what can kind of separate decision makers is the guys that can really manipulate the defense with their eyes. And he, you know, he's one of the few guys in college that can do that. Um, just knows where people are on the court. Obviously, it helps when you have a, you know, a great center like Zach, and you have a lot of skill um, around him. And then, you know, and then Fletcher um, is very confident. You know, really looking. Other night they just played Zach one on one, and they stayed with shooters. And sometimes you just don't get, a, a, you know, as many looks. But just tried to talk to him about being aggressive, looking for his. You know, take it when it's there but also using his dribble some. But yeah, both those guys are confident, you know, and, and you just gotta kinda stick with it. Um, and you kinda work through things and obviously playing, you know, Marquette, West Virginia, and now, you know, playing Gonzaga, you just, you can kinda see it with them, you know, that they believe in themselves and you just need to keep getting experiences and getting better. Now, why was your half court defense so effective? Um, you know, we, we tried to just, you know, put Zach on the other big, and just clog it up. It's really just, it's kind of our version of a zone. You know, when we, when we don't guard somebody, and, and there's some risk involved. There's, there's a lot of risk involved, you know. Um, you know, you kind of see that when Ben Gray came in and made a couple shots there at the end. Hickman makes a couple shots because we run mm -hmm. and try to double sometimes. Or maybe it's, it's not traditional, but after you watch Drew and how effective he is and how good he is, you gotta do something, you gotta do something. You just can't sit there and watch him wheel and deal. And um, you know, when we did it, I thought I thought Drew made some passes that he doesn't normally make driving. He's a very good low post passer, but when he drives a lot of times and he spins and plays, he draws fouls, he scores, but he's not a passer at that time. I thought he made two or three passes in the first half that were really exceptional, and um, you know, that's what we wanted to do. You know, and, and it was you know Hickman had us really close to changing some things because he obviously knocked some shots down. Um, but we knew we were going to have to live with some guys and uh, just try to keep the ball out of the paint as much as possible. Even though when they went to that ball screen, we were going to kind of live with Drew working the seam, shooting floaters. We just didn't want him to get all the way to the rim. You know, if he could make like that eight to 10 footer as a floater, we were going to live with that. We just wanted to stop the rhythm threes from the guys like Bolton, you know, Swather, you know, Malachi Smith, you know, and, and then just make it happen and just kind of, so. Um, if we played him and did the same thing, I don't know if we'd have as much success. It's one of those things where, you know, you, it can go against you, too. Did you learn anything about your team today in this game? Um, not really, to be honest with you. Obviously, we beat a very good team, but um, our guys are competitive. They're fun to coach. Um, you know, they get along. You know, they're, they're out there playing with a purpose, and that's what you have to have. Early in the season, very few teams play with a purpose collectively. And I thought our guys played with a purpose today, and that's what you have to have. Everybody, when it gets to January and February, you know, smells it and understands what it's about because you go through your struggles, you go through your losses, you get it figured out, or if you, you know, you just get beat and go home then. You know, but the good teams get it figured out, but not everybody gets it figured out early. But I, I, I thought our guys, you know, did, did a great job today just playing to win and making the extra pass and sharing the basketball. Yeah, I'd like to ask Zach, where are you collectively better yeah, I, we're, we're better in, in terms of following a scouting report. So if we scheme something a little bit different like we did today, they stick with it and follow it and help each other. I, I think that's where we're different more than anything, or, or just better, I should say. Just the job you did on the defensive rebounds, limit them to one shot, and finally closed out possession by rebounding the ball. Right, yeah, and you know, we sub, and those guys are good players. You know, Trey Kaufman, Wren, and you know, Caleb First, they'd be playing 30 minutes. A lot of places. They're they're really good. So just wanted to keep fresh bodies out there. But I, I thought our front line was good. Brandon Newman's a was a great defensive rebounding guard and got in there and got some defensive rebounds for us also. But but I just thought collectively we've you know we've worked on it. Marquette out rebounded us. We were fortunate um, to out rebound West Virginia and uh, really emphasized that. But I thought we responded tonight and we rebounded the ball well. Braden seems to have a knack for kind of taking command of games in some of these tight situations. Does that surprise you considering how young he is, or did you know that about him when you recruited him? No, he's, he's just a basketball player. Mm -hmm. He just knows how to play, and he's very productive. And so a lot of times guys that, you know, they get ranked or whatever, you're just getting ranked and people are looking at you just on your raw talent. But how productive are you with your talent? You know, he's just a productive player. He can make an open shot, but if you take it away from him, he'll distribute the basketball more. 
You know, he had 20 against Marquette. They turned around, I think he had four or five in our last game. And, and so it, it really doesn't matter. You know, he kind of takes what the defense gives him. He can get to the rim. You know, he can make plays. He can score. Uh, but, you know, he's just a productive player. Coach, well, to, have a, last one here. Uh, to have a double-digit lead both last night and tonight and not being able to – or not having the tides turn and have the lead cut down to two, three positions, right. what does that say about the resiliency and the result yeah. of your team so far? Well, I thought last night, you know, when they cut it to four, you know, you as a coach, you're just – you're right there. You know, you're going to call and use a timeout or what, you know. Sometimes timeouts can help you and sometimes timeouts, you know, they can change defenses, different things can happen. Um, the momentum can switch. It's not always call a timeout and you fix it, right? You think you do sometimes as a coach, but um, it, it can be misleading. I, I thought our guys just against West Virginia when they cut it to four, made, you know, two, three plays in a row, and it just pushed it back to that three, four, five possessions, whatever it might have pushed to on that run that we had. Um, and then tonight, we just kind of kept, you know, pushing that lead out and, and just kind of sticking, you know, to our game plan. But yeah, we, we've been able to, you know, be resilient. And, and, and just hang in there and, and build on things. I also think our guys have been pretty fresh too. You know, last night we, you know, I think no, nobody got over 25 minutes on our team, 26 minutes, something around there. Um, and, and so they, they didn't have to play 30, 32 minutes last night. And then tonight, a couple guys did have to do that. Um, so I, I thought our bench did a good, uh, a good job. Thank you, guys. Thank you.